elementary students, it's Mrs. Thompson. Now we're, we're still in chapter one, but now we've moved on to section two, where the basic idea is we're going to be measuring and constructing segments. I'm not going to be able to construct segments on our videos. I'm limited by um, the technology I have. I, I would do it better here in the classroom. So that's not going to be necessarily this first example, but um, later on in the, in the section and possibly even this chapter. We're going to run into that. I'll let you know. We'll demonstrate that in class and we'll come back and circle back around to it. Okay, it's note card or electronic notebook time because we're going to be putting two postulates into this particular, um, this particular thing. Uh, it's called postulate 1-2-1. Remember the, the first one is the chapter that you're in. The two is the section year, and now we're in section two, one dash two, or one point two. And then the last one is this is the first postulate in this section. Okay, remember in the last section, one dash one, we had five postulates numbered one, two, three, four, five. Okay, and now in this one, we're going to have two of them. So postulate one dash two dash one. The points on a line can be put into a one-to-one -one correspondence with the real numbers. In other words, if I created a line segment and I made a number line, there would be numbers that correspond in sequential order with each of the points, is what it's saying. Um, it's very basic. It's almost like, why are we writing this down kind of thing, but it is a postulate. Now, the distance, this is where I want you to focus your attention, okay? The distance between any two points is the absolute value of the difference of the coordinates. So whatever their value is, if you subtract the value of, of each point that you're finding and take the absolute value of it, that's how far it is. We take the absolute value because we're looking for distance. Distance is always positive. And that's why we need to take, because this is true, because distance is always positive, that's why we have to take the absolute value of the, of the numbers that you're subtracting. Because you're not going to have a negative distance. And if you do, something's wrong. You didn't take the absolute value of the numbers. So let's take a look at example one. And notice that they're, they, look how they've written this. They've given us DC. If you do not see any symbolism above DC, you know, for example, we learned in, in section one, um, DC could be a line, so we'd write it like that. That's line DC. This is segment DC. This is ray DC. If you don't see any of those symbols above the DC, no symbols at all, then they're asking you to find the distance. That's what they're asking you to do. Okay, so see how DC is just plain, no symbol at all, okay? Then we're supposed to calculate how long DC is. Now there's two um, lines here, number lines. Um, a and B are gonna go with this very first one here, and C and D are gonna go with the second one that you see on the right. So let's look at D and C. D is located at four and a half and C is located at 2. So it doesn't matter. You can do it one of two ways. You can take the absolute value of 4.5 minus 2, or you can take the absolute value of 2 minus 4.5. It's not. It doesn't matter what order you subtract the numbers as long as you take the absolute value of that final answer. Remember, if the answer is negative, you, you're doing it wrong. It is it's supposed to be positive. Distance is always positive. Okay? So if we take four and a half and we subtract two from it, then the length of DC is two and a half. That's the length of DC. Okay? Let's look at EF. Again, E is at negative four. F is at negative one. They're not always going to be integers. They may be um, mixed numbers or decimals, fractions. It could be any way that they present this to you. You guys have calculators. You can figure it out, okay? So you can either do it one of two ways. Take the absolute value of negative 4 
minus a negative 1. Or you can do it in the other direction, negative 1 minus a negative 4. It doesn't really matter the order of the numbers when you're subtracting. Now, because the numbers are both negative, you, you are subtracting, and so you don't just drop the, the negative sign off of one of the numbers because you're subtracting. Um, that negative sign stays with the number whether you're adding or subtracting. In this case, we're always going to be subtracting when we're finding distance. All right, so negative 4 minus a negative 1. That's the same thing as negative 4 plus 1. Or negative 1 minus a negative 4 is the same thing as negative 1 plus 4. So regardless, when you take the absolute value of your answer, you should get 3. The distance between those are three. Now, some of you are super uber smart, and you're like, hey, why can't I just count that? You can. You can go, oh, that's one, two, three units away from each other. This one's one, two, and a half units away. Absolutely can do that. I, I have no problem with it at all. So whatever is easier for you is the way you should do it, okay? doesn't bother me. All right, let's look at C and D. I'm actually going to leave these for you. So this will be extra credit. I'll give you plus one for each one that you do. You are finding the distance. So you can either do your subtraction, take your absolute value, or you can count it on the number one like I just showed you. All right, everybody good? You know what to do? All right, we'll talk about it in class tomorrow.